All right, so good evening. Welcome back to JPCE Special Talk. It's Jared Campbell. So this evening, we're going to talk a little more about Israel and probably will be on this topic of Israel for a while up until when maybe things cool down, if they do cool down. All right, so thank you all again for coming back. So we're going to read three articles today, right? Just three. There's a lot going on, but it's way too much to cover. So I've chosen three articles to cover tonight. Um, I'm also going to be answering questions where I, uh, somebody posted a, a comment on my YouTube and I'm going to answer that question to the best of my ability, right? What they ask, right? And then my, my answer is going to be more of a, a, from the biblical perspective, right? I'm going to read a little, read from scripture too. That'll be later on. Once we go over these three articles, I'm going to answer those questions. So without further ado, we're going to jump into this. So thank you all again for following. Your true definition of minister is to serve someone else as well. So no matter how I serve, right, whether it's from reading the Bible, my ministry, or to just these current events, right? Serving someone else's will is how we minister to everyone, right? And so I enjoy the current events along with my Bible readings. So without further ado, let's jump into this. Let's cover these three articles. We'll go from there. So I will say that I do believe things will continue to get worse. I don't think that they're going to get better, right? I know there's probably people out there who don't like to hear that, but from my honest perspective, as a man with a Bible, that's all I am, man with a Bible, a man who goes to theology school. I study theology, right? That's what I'm doing now, right? So I'm just a man with the Bible. I love keeping everybody informed. At the same time, I like to be that honest voice. There's a lot of people on YouTube, and they're good people, but I sometimes I think that they do things for likes, for subscriptions, for comments, things like that. For me, I don't care about all those things. What I do care about is being truthful. What I do care about is ministering to you all. What I do care about is trying to be that open, honest voice, a non-biased look into everything. And that's what I'm really about. You know, my popularity online, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, you go look at all my stuff. I mean, I don't I don't get a whole lot of views. And I don't get a whole lot of likes, but that's not what I do it for. Right. So without further ado, we're going to get into this. But my honest, my honest opinion to the perspective which I have is only going to get worse. I said last night on my evening video that I think in 2024, we're going to have a lot of supply chain issues. Right. That's what I think. Right. Now, I'm not dogmatic. I'm just giving you all what I feel. Right. And what I've seen in scripture, what's been revealed to me. So prepare for supply chain issues. Right. Be prepared. You know, get prepared on all levels. Right. No matter what that level is. Right. Be prepared. Right. We'll talk more about that in a second. Let's get into all this. All right. So three articles. The first article, we're going to talk about a rescue mission that's underway. All right, so here we go. You all should see the screen. I'm going to zoom in as best as I can. All right, right there it says historic mission. So joint U.S.-Israel operation to rescue 150 hostages. Delta Force SEAL Team 6 and Shayat 13 will enter the heart of Gaza. America forces are on standby in Greece. All right. So Israel and the U.S. will attempt to free approximately 150 held hostages held by Hamas in the tunnels in the Gaza Strip. This could be a dangerous mission, though, right? This is, this is a historic mission with a high degree of risk. I'll bet it is. The operation is expected to begin as soon as the Israeli headquarters established specifically for this purpose locates the exact location of hostages. To this end, U.S. special operations teams and intelligence agents arrived in Israel as advisors to assist Israel forces in rescuing the hostages in Gaza once the ground invasion began. Unofficial sources say the elite U.S. forces will, normal, will, normally, will normally participate in the operation. I guess that's how it's translated. Remember, this is a Greek source. The American photograph Greece saying that U.S. operation forces have been put on alert in nearby European country the JSOC unit to help even more if needed. 
Earlier became known that the Greek Navy has, re has reportedly been placed on high alert with the Fazrera Frigate deployed in NATO standing Naval Group 2 in the Eastern Mediterranean for operations alongside the aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford. In this tweet, it says, I'm told that JSOC unit is a mere hours away from both Israel and Lebanon, a European country situated along the Mediterranean Sea. Breaking. Defense officials tell me U.S. has sent, um, sent members of the U.S. intelligence community and special operations forces to Israel to advise not participate. <laughs> so they've been sent to advise not participate. Their words, not mine. Now, do I believe that they will not participate? Of course not, right? One thing you learn when you study theology and you read the Bible, you read every word for what it says, and you also have to also think, right? Do we really believe that they won't participate? No, of course not. Now, they could advise, but I'm thinking there's more to that. But we don't know, right? But hostage rescue efforts. A JSOC unit is on standby if needed in nearby European country. From OSINT Defender, the Greek Navy has reportedly been the Greek Navy has reportedly been placed into a heightened state of readiness with the Greek Hydra class. Right? Being deployed alongside standing NATO, Maritime Group 2 of the Eastern Mediterranean for operations alongside the USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier. There will be a hostage rescue operation in Gaza. The U.S. has sent hostage rescue experts to advise Israel forces on the release of 150 hostages, possibly including some Americans kidnapped by Hamas during the bloody offensive in southern Israel. More specifically, the U.S. is sending hostage rescue experts to Israel and putting the special operations team door kickers on alert. Interesting. Meanwhile, U.S. special operations forces have been put on, on alert in a nearby European country. According to two senior U.S. military officials who spoke on the condition to discuss sensitive national security issues. Sources describe these troops as door kickers who could conduct a rescue effort themselves if ordered. Officially, the U.S. has not Officially, the U.S. will not assist Israel in any operation on the ground. The sources said, unofficially, Americans are feverishly working on their participation in the joint venture. The U.S. has sent both members of its intelligence community and special operations forces from U.S. Central Command and U.S. Special Operations Command to Israel to advise and assist in intelligence operations, the sources told the messenger. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin confirmed on Tuesday that the U.S., has the people on the ground to assist Israel authorities with intelligence and planning for possible operations involving hostage rescue efforts. Austin who traveled to Austin who traveled to Brussels with the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff General Charles Brown to meet with U Ukraine Defense Contract Group said the Pentagon has a liaison team in Israel that works with I Israeli Special Operation Forces. Austin also said the U.S. has the ability to rapidly deploy other resources in the region. So Delta Force, still Team 6. Although officials did not say what kind of special operations forces were put on alert, they said the military unit fell under JSON, right? Joint Special Operations Command. The two primary counterterrorism units under JSOC that have historically undertaken hostage rescue, rescue missions worldwide are Army's, Army's Delta Force, officially known as the 1st Special Forces Operation Detachment Delta, and the Navy Navy SEAL Team 6, Naval Special Warfare Development Group. Logically, from the, from the Israeli side, the Shayat 13 elite forces will attempt. In addition, the U.S. began begun work on delivering ammunition and air defenses to Israel. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next article. We kind of got the gist of that one. All right, so a, a special operation in the work okay all right next article get zoomed in here so it says russia everyone get out of israel the u.s says 101st airborne division to jordan sees battles on five fronts for idf this is huge five fronts right israel is not a very big country right? but here is something that probably most people don't know Israel has a large reserve type force. They have almost half a million in reserves. 
I think they're almost 200,000 active last I checked and they have almost 500, almost half a million in reserves. Right. So Israel could technically fight this war for a while, unless something big happens. But I think that they're a lot better off than Ukraine was right. When Ukraine went up against Russia, but we'll see. So it says the U.S. is further strengthening its forces in the Middle East region. After sending aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford and the blustering air assets in the region, they're also deploying the 101st Airborne Division to Jordan. Additional U.S. sources say Israel will need additional ammunition and missiles. That is why they transferred, transferred to its ownership all American quantities of weapons that are in the warehouse warehouses in Israel. However, a study by a think tank where the fifth fleet is based showed that it, it is possible that Israel will have to fight on five fronts. Washington sent 101st Airborne Division to Jordan amid escalation of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Washington sent 101st Airborne Division, which is the most combat-ready unit of the United States Army, to Jordan. Along with this, along with this, sources say that members of the U.S. Special Operations Forces arrived in Israel along with CIA operatives. Yeah, go figure. In addition, Washington is sending yet another aircraft carrier to the area of potential hostilities, one of which is already within striking distance of Lebanon-Israel border. So specifically, John Kirby, the representative of the National Security Council, stated in his statements that a second U.S. aircraft carrier will be in the Mediterranean in the coming days. According to Kirby, the aircraft carrier will be in the Middle East in the next few days is the Dwight D. Eisenhower, which will start on a long and planned trip that will take place next week and will be where it's needed. So let's, let's listen to uh, what Kirby has to say in this video. Let me go back out, guys. I apologize. Here we go. Peter. Oh, here we go. Uh, Congressman Lawler just said on TV that uh, they're, they're expecting an announcement within 24 hours by an airlift to the U.S. citizens. Have you, can you tell us anything about that? I don't have any details for you on that. I would just tell you, uh, Peter, that uh, we're in State Department is in active touch with uh, American citizens in Israel, many of them, as you well know, are dual nationals, um, uh, to try to make sure that uh, that w that a we've got the connection and 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 b that we know if they have any concerns, uh, like in in the case that they want to they want to leave. So we're uh, we're in active conversations with uh, with Americans uh, on the ground there, and uh, we want to make sure right now there are still commercial carriers, not all, some flying in and out of Ben Gurion every day. There are still now viable ground routes if you wanted to leave safely out of Israel. That, that is also an option to you. But neither of those options may necessarily be feasible um, or affordable to certain uh, Americans. And so we are exploring actively um, a, a range of other options uh, to assist if Americans want to leave. I'm just not at liberty now to go into more detail about that. So Russia says, get out of Israel. At the same time, the Russian ambassador to Israel called on the Russians to leave the country without waiting for the situation to worsen. During discussion on the current Iraq-Israel conflict at V, I'm just going to call it V, International Debating Club, suggested that compatriots take advantage of all available scheduled flights. My strong recommendation is to use the services of Russia and existing foreign air carriers that continue to provide their services now, the diplomat said. He goes on to add that in the case of any other development of events, the embassy will not leave any of its fellow citizens unattended. Mos Moscow, meanwhile, proposed removing civilians from the Gaza Strip. Right? So in total, there are 400 people, of which two, 280 are Russian. 
the Iranian guards will support Hezbollah against Israel. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. What, what am I shocked? <laughs> so, according to the Russian sources, Iran may enter into an armed confrontation with Israel on the side of the Shiite movement Hezbollah in the framework of a joint operation. Alan, the analysts see risk of war on five fronts for Israel. In the near future, Israel is threatened with an outbreak of hostilities on five fronts. Simultaneously, this is the conclusion reached by analysts from the Lebec Special Center operating in Bahrain on the base of the Fifth Fleet reports. Fighting with the Palestinian Hamas movement operating the Gaza Strip is already underway. Now the situation on the border with Lebanon has worsened and the Hezbollah movement may go to war with Israel. In addition, the Palestinians of the West Bank are likely to join the war. And the entry of Syria and Iran into the war is likely. Analysts stress that conflict will be long-term and, co and, and constantly escalating. So we have footage showing the recent launch of rockets out of the Gaza Strip and their, inter their interception by the Iron Dome batteries. So Israel is preparing a full-scale war. In underground parking lots, they have set up hospitals with hundreds of beds. Some of the pictures. Let me zoom in. Interesting stuff. So it looks like it's about to get hot and heavy. All right, so last article, all right? This one says, Israeli Major General, we are following into an Iranian trap in Gaza. The U.S. is also mo mobilizing the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit with two ships. This is interesting. So a general saying that they could be following into a trap. The U.S. baton the, in the USS Carter Hall with 3,000 Marines on war footing. The U.S., in addition to the two aircraft carriers, USS Dwight D. Eisenhower and the USS Gerald, Gerald, uh, Gerald R. Ford, which will be together in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Israel, is also mobilizing the 26th Marine Extraterrestrial Unit with amphibious assault ships. These are the U.S. Tom LHD-5 and USS Carter Hall LSD-50 with approximately 3,000 Marines. The unit has recently ordered the unit has recently ordered to stop the exercise in Kuwait where it was based and head to the Arabian Sea in order to prepare for further operations as a result of emerging events. So this is big. The, so Israeli Major General will fall into an Iranian trap in Gaza. The Israeli Major General is sounding the alarm as he talks of the Iranian trap being set in the Israeli army once the IDF ground operation in Gaza begins. If Israeli forces start a ground operation in Gaza Strip, it will mean that the country will fall into an Iranian trap and start acting according to the Iranian plan. This assessment of the unfolding events was given by the former commander of the IDF Air Force, Major General David Ivory. According to the military expert, Hamas attacks will force Israel Defense Forces, IDF, 
to respond with ground invasion to Gaza. But when Israeli troops bog down in the ground operation, Israel will be attacked from Lebanon and the West Bank. This will lead to more serious consequences. The general could be right. I'm thinking in my head how that's going to look. Like I said, I'm no expert. Ivory believes that God believes that the Gaza Strip is not a significant threat to Israel if, at present. Palestinian forces operating there can be suppressed by airstrikes and through economic pressure. I can see that point, right? I mean, they've already turned off um, what electricity and water, right? And they've been bombing them anyway. So I, in a way, I see that point, right? But if but if the Israeli ground forces enter Gaza and stuck there for a long time, having suffered heavy losses, then a real threat to the country will be created on a completely different level. The only viable option for a ground operation is the outright occupation of the Gaza Strip. But this will lead to a large number of casualties among the IDF troops. Hmm. Moreover, it's not clear how long it will take Israel to occupy this territory and what funds will be required for this. Apparently, not all the is not all Israeli military experts support the prospect of ground military operation at Gaza Strip, fearing a greater escalation of the conflict and involvement of other par participants in it. The Bataan amphibious ready group consisting of the U.S. Bataan, U.S. Carter Hall, and also roughly three thousand Marines from the Twenty Sixth Marine Expeditionary Unit arrived are right now off the coast of Bahrain and heading in the direction of the Arabian Sea after they were forced. The U.S. The U.S. is also mobilizing the 26th Marine Expedition Unit. Right? What is the 26th Marine Expedition Unit, Unit Special Operations Capable? Marine Corps Expedition Units are groups of more than 2,000 Marines and sailors who embark on on three amphibious operation ships that are stationed overseas in the event of emergency. In August of 2021, for example, the 24th Marine Extra Unit was already in the Middle East as the Taliban closed in on Cabal. And the, US, and the United States worked to evacuate American and Afghan allies from Afghanistan. I have other thoughts on that. Marines from this unit were some of the first deployed to Cabal to assist in the evacuation. The 26th Marine Extra Unit the first amphibious exterior unit with a special operations de designation in more than a decade, according to the unit. It has about 2,400 Marines and sailors from 2nd Marine Exterior Force, the Corps Force Base in North Carolina. Special operations de designation means service members in the unit receive enhanced pre deployment training, practicing aircraft and people recovery and raids. All right, so let's see before I go over some of these Bible verses, let's look at something else real quick, right? I'm going to say it's this one. Here we go. That is this one right here. It won't translate for me. I'll try it again. says, unknown country launched fierce cyber attack on Israel, causing chaos. Israel army saw incursions by drones and airborne forces. Let's look at some of these videos before I answer some questions. So the British Foreign Secretary runs for cover as an air raid siren wells during its visit, his visit to Israel. Thank you. 
So Israeli channels report the infiltration of 15 paragliders, up to 30 commandos from northern Lebanon into the Avim area, northern Israel. Residents in northern Israel city of Hafiva can be seen running for cover as air raid sirens blare following the launch of R-160 missiles by Hamas in the Gaza Strip towards the city. Footage of Hamas rocket hitting in Tel Aviv. Ha, sabre news. You know, one thing I have heard is that they're trying to figure out how to overload the Iron Dome, right? That's what they're trying to figure out, how to overload it. Because you got to think the Iron Dome will only have so many missiles in it that, that it could use at once, right, to shoot down other missiles. So what I've heard is that Hamas and Hezbollah, they're trying to figure out how to overload it. Think about what that would happen if they figured out how to overload it. They won't let me play that video. All right. So I'm going to answer the questions now, right? And a little more idea of what's going on in Israel. We'll, we'll keep doing it each day, right? So I was asked a question right, before I close out. Here are the comments. Right here. Somebody said, Mr. Jared, what do you think about what's happening between Israel and Palestine Hamas. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go out here, back to here, to here. Before I read this, right? Well, I said last night that in Hebrew, what Hamas means, right? It, it's a Hebrew word and it means violence, right? Injustice. So the word Hamas in Hebrew means violence, means destruction, right? I think I said it's used. Either was you see in the Old Testament, it's used either fifty nine or sixty times, and fifty nine uh, or sixty verses, something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head. So Hamas in Hebrew means violence. Okay? So what's going on in the world? Well, let's read a little bit. All right, I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to read. I'm not going to read a lot. Or right? I'm going to read the signs of the times, the end of the age. And so I'm going to read to to a certain point. It's going to stop. Right. So it's talking about Jesus. So at this time, Jesus is sitting on the Mount of Olives and disciples are asking him privately. Right. So at this time, they're, they're asking him privately, what are the, the signs of the end of the age? So here he is. So Jesus. Now, as he says on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. 
and you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places, and all these are the beginnings of sorrows. Does that not sound that, that we are in the beginning of sorrows, right? There will be wars and rumors of wars, right? We have that now, right? We have wars, we also have rumors of wars. Things that, are, that keep saying are going to take place, but haven't, right? Nation will rise against nation that's happening, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be what famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. And all these are the beginnings of sorrows, the birth pangs. The birth pains keep coming, right? So we're already in those times. We're in the signs, right? We're in the, we're, we're in it, right? So it's a great time for all of us to be alive because you're in it, right? Enjoy it, right? You're in it, right? And I'm also going to read from 2 Timothy chapter 3, first nine verses. So this one says, perilous times and perilous men. And it says, but know this. That in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying his power. Hmm. And from such, people turn away. For of this sort, or those who creep into households and make captives of global women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to knowledge of the truth. Now as Janies and Jamborees resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. Does that, does that not sound like the times we're living in as well, right? So take notes, right? Read 2 Timothy chapter 3 on your own, the first nine verses. Take note to read Matthew 24, read all of it, right? So I'm going to answer the question like this. When I see Israel and Hamas, Hezbollah, and all this stuff going on in that region, to me, it's biblical, right? I always look towards Israel, right? Because Israel is the one key that I have that tells me what's taking place and what's about to happen. Because the end, all it has everything to do with Israel, right? It does. So keep your eyes on Israel. This is all biblical, right? Now, how far will this go, right? In the past, we've seen them what? Declare ceasefire. They fight for a few days, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months. And there's always a ceasefire. Is this time different? Only time will tell, right? If this war continues, right, this could be a biblical war, right? This could end up being a straight up holy war. But then again, time will tell, right? So what's happening is biblical, and my perspective is biblical, and it's very important. It's going to draw a lot of the world in, right? A lot of the world's going to be drawn in, right? This is going to probably really kick off World War III. The times that we're living in, we read in Matthew 24, we read in 2 Timothy, right? The Bible tells you, right? what, whether you believe or not, it's, it's really your choice. You have free will, right? I'm not going to sit here and preach to anybody. You have free will. You have, you have the free will to accept or reject salvation. It's that simple. You either accept or reject it, right? I mean, you have free will. Right? So that's the thing. I believe what I read in the Bible. Right? Now, whether other people don't, I don't argue that with them. Right? They have free will. But what's going on is definitely biblical. It's actually a big deal if it continues to play out this way. 
right? <clears throat> if this war does continue and it continues for a long time, it will shape the rest of the world for generations to come. But what some of you think you know, it's about to change. The world will be different by 2030. I'm telling you all, it's going to be different by 2030. By next year, 2024, if these wars continue, you will have problems with supply chain issues. I'm already telling you in advance, right? You're going to have more supply chain issues. It's only going to get worse. You got to start preparing, right? As our generations get more and more unholy and more and more ungodly, you're going to start seeing this. The eventually are going to lead to persecutions for all Christians, just not in in isolated areas anymore. It's going to be worldwide, right? That's coming too. <clears throat> Some of you Christians in America, you better start waking up to that fact. It's, it's coming at your doorstep, right? Telling you now it's coming. How strong is your faith? Right? And it's more than just having strong faith. It's, it's the whole package. And that's where I'm going to end, right? So I'm going to end this evening. Okay. So the times are in front of you. It's coming. Right. So I talked about this morning about being spiritually prepared. That was this morning's devotional. If any of you want to go and check out that devotional, it's posted. It's all about spiritual preparation. Talk about preparing because the end is near. Right. That parable was talking about the end when Jesus comes back and how some people will be caught off guard. Right. The parable was about 10 virgins, five weren't prepared and five were the five that weren't prepared didn't did not get into the marriage supper of the lamb they didn't get into the banquet the wedding banquet it's really really important parable right so it's the signs that we're in but i'm going to get off here now love you all so much thank you for following right remember Remember, faith, right? faith in him, do his will, his purpose, right? whatever that may be. And I pray for all of you, whether you believe or don't believe, I'm always praying for you. Right? And I always will. And I always will serve any of you. It doesn't matter what you believe or not, I'll serve you. Right? It's like Christ came to serve. We are to serve and do that ourselves, right? But things are getting interesting. And I've been saying that a lot of my videos. Yeah, I'm just a simple guy, right? That's all I am. Simple guy with a Bible. That's it. You know, nothing else, nothing more. Hopefully, to, hopefully I'll get to seminary school, right? In a few years, if things don't get too bad, right? I'm going back to school, studying Bible and theology. It's what I enjoy. I've been, I've been reading the Bible strong ever since 2019. Right? I read it every day. Right? I read it every day. And I do my best ability to apply it to my life and my philosophy, how I live. Right? I apply the teachings of Christ. I serve him. I pray to him each and every day. He tells me what to do, and I execute it, right? I do what I'm told to do. That's all I have. I love you all so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you, right? May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us, and those who hate us, right? So it's all biblical. It really is. Jer Wesley Campbell, good evening, good night. JPCE spiritual talk. Never ever hold back. Right? Seek truth. You seek him. Right? You do his will, his purpose through your life. That's all I have. I love you all.